all, we all have friends going to Bermuda and Antigua and Aruba and all those places. Oh, I've got a question for those people. Have you been to Caesar's Head? Have you been to Edisto Beach? Have you been to Pauly's Island? If you can find a place that's prettier, more relaxing and more comfortable in those places, then I'll go. But I got to see all those places before I'm leaving. That's my story. And just uh, just briefly before we get to the business at hand, we have uh, business people from all over the world are coming to South Carolina looking to do business. And that's good for them. But it also tells us something. Uh, at, at the inauguration the other day, Senator Scott was not there. He was he was bound in Washington because of the lack of funds to get him down here. But uh, <laughs> excuse me. Say what? That's a lot. We had 20, 22 diplomats from 27 countries sitting on the steps at the State House. Now, what does that tell you? It was a beautiful day, but they weren't here for the beautiful day in the sunshine to play golf or go fishing or any of those things. They were here looking to do business. That means we're in a good place to do business. I don't know if they go to other places like that. What I've heard from, I remember a law firm a few years ago, one of the biggest in the world, they'd opened up an office in South Carolina, and I asked them, how'd you happen to come here? They had over 2,000 lawyers in, don't know how many they have now. How'd you happen to come here? And they said, we did, this was about, I guess about eight years ago. And they, had, they said that after the recession had started to lift and come back up, they did three independent studies, analyses of the world, to figure out where the economic growth and prosperity was going to be. Because they wanted to put an office there and didn't really have one there. They got them in Hong Kong and London and Singapore and all over the United States. And he said that three different reports, studies all came back, they all said the same thing. It's the southeastern United States, it's where the sun shines, and there's no state that has more potential than South Carolina. They said that's why we're in South Carolina. So we in South Carolina, we ain't done any studies, but we know <laughs> that this is the place to be. So I want to congratulate y'all on, on your vision and understanding of that to be here, and I'll say again, if you haven't been to some of the little small towns in South Carolina, you are missing something. It ought to take some time and just ride and go look at them, because you could you could almost go downtown in any of these little small places, just take a picture, a snapshot of anything, and it'll be a good postcard. It's beautiful what's going on. But more is gonna go on because of what we're doing. Tim Scott's here, and he'll talk in a minute, but before I want you, you got to stand up the Opportunity Zone Act. Stand up, let them see Tim Scott, our United States Senator. <laughs> what Tim Scott did was he took, a, took some common sense and put it together. It had been done before. Jack Kemp and a man named Robert Woodson from Philadelphia created a, they called it an Opportunity Zone or an Enterprise Zone, Enterprise Zone. And it, it, it fluttered along for a while and then uh, collapsed, I guess, to the change of administrations or something in Washington. But now we've got it again and it is supercharged. This opportunity zone gave the, the states the opportunity to go through, I think it's 5% of our census tracts. It's not on counties or school districts, but as you know, census tracts, all this will be explained in detail, I presume, in, in a few minutes. But, we, we had a criteria to where they had to be depressed at a certain level and various other things. And we were allowed to pick 5% of 1,097, whatever it is, 135. We were the first state to get ours picked and send them in. And what we did with the Department of Commerce, is headed by Bobby Hitts, and y'all know, works with Jennifer. We, went, we talked to the, the councilmen, the uh, mayors, uh, all sorts of people all over the state and had everybody submit their census tracts that they thought would qualify according to the formula given us by Senator Scott's Act. And so we selected 135 of them. I think the 127 that meet the absolute criteria are completely, and then I think they have a many left, seven, about seven, eight, that are adjacent to them. Now those won't be changed. There's no way to change them or expand them at least not now.
So we uh, we got ours in first, and they're out there, and you know about them. You can get the list from from Commerce, and that gives you a tax incentive in you if you invest there. But there's some other things that we have in our state that make it even better. And I this is one of those reasons all these people are looking to come here. One is we have something in addition to the opportunities on that. We have a quality, affordable housing program. And it provides grants. We get federal tax money, your tax money sent to Washington, sent back to us. And we get that to distribute in grants through the South Carolina Housing Finance and Development Authority. And I think they're about $13 million in left. And if you go in these certain depressed areas, and it happens to be in one of these census tracts, and there are two, two advantages for you. And I've asked the legislature to, to enact, and I believe they will, something we've never done in South Carolina is aimed at education, but it also involves economic growth. Y'all well know what comes first, the, the strong family, a good education, or a good job? Well, some people say it's the chicken, others say it's the egg, but I know, you know, if you don't have all, th all three, and the two you have ain't going to do you any good. So you got to have all three. So what we what we are going to do, I'm confident we can get it done, is have the legislature provide a closing fund for school districts that are poverty stricken. Uh, that, and most of those, of course, will be rural districts where a lot of times business and industry don't want to go. But if, if you if you go there, they'll, if, if the, a business wants to go, and it could be a housing project, it could be a business, if you go there, and it is a, you go there because um, you, you're interested in revitalizing that area, that's the reason you go, to make money, and it in impacts the education district. That is, we're going to give some schools money to build a building, build a new gymnasium, add on a wing, clean something up. It's all part of a closing fund, an economic development closing fund aimed at education handled by the Department of Commerce. So if you do that, that's three different <coughs> ways right there that you can get a little boost from tax credits and grants in order to go into these areas. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you, if we can, if we can get the some of the rural areas in South Carolina cooking as well as some of the others are. It'll, it'll be, a, be a great thing. I'll close with one quote. You may have heard it before, and that's why this rural, what's the name of it? It is the Rural School District Economic Development Closing Fund. That's not the law yet, but we hope it will be soon. The, uh, one of the inspirations was for that was Dr. Andrews, who was the superintendent of education in Lee County. And as you know, Lee County is a beautiful county, but it's a rural county, no doubt about it. The biggest industries there are the waste dump out on I-20, and the Lee Prison, which has been in the news recently, and the school district. They got one school, one school district, or less than a thousand students. But uh, they have a superior superintendent of education, Dr. Andrews. And I, I was meeting with her a year or so ago, and she was explaining that the young people there grow up and leave. There's nothing, nothing going on around there for them to do. So I said, well, do they want to be here? She said, yes, they do. She said, we had a decision to make about having a big football game, big homecoming. And so we sent out an advertisement to all of the graduates of this school, this high school. And of course, it's all three schools in one. Sent it to everybody that's ever been here said we had over 7,000 people show up for one of our football games. Usually, they don't even have bleachers. It's just it's a small place. Jam-packed with people. Everybody wants to be home, but they all leave. So I asked the question. I said, Dr. Andrews, what would happen if a company, a big project, came in to your county offering, say, 500 jobs? And y'all can see the picture. She took off her glasses. She leaned back in a chair, put down her number two fresh little eraser sharpened yellow number two pencil put it down and she says that would change everything everything just 500 jobs so what i want y'all to do is, is just think about that you're in this not for altruistic reasons you're in it for, for money to make for enterprise free enterprise profit that's what drives the economy that's what it makes it all work 
But keep in mind, you have these three opportunities. If we get this third one passed, that will really give you a boost, and you'll be making South Carolina even a better, stronger place in the process. So I thank you for being here. Uh, you know, it's a sold out crowd. We couldn't get everybody in. I saw Bill Ellen upstairs says they're going to have to add on to the convention center if we keep doing like this. <laughs> so I thank you very much, and I will want to hear what this next speaker has to say. Thank you.